though you want to study in Canada but feel like your GPA might be low for admission at a Canadian university, don't worry. I've got your back. In today's video, we'll talk about Canadian universities that accept low GPAs, backlogs, low percentages, and what documents you need to apply. What's up everybody, Sadia Khaf here. I'm an electrical engineer doing PhD in machine learning and on this channel we usually talk about engineering, machine learning and highly paid scholarships. In today's video we are talking about Canadian universities that accept low GPAs. What's a low GPA, you might ask? Because GPA is not a standardized measure of scaling or performance or grades. There are so many GPA scales, 4.0 GPA scale, 5.0 GPA scale, 4.3 GPA scale. Some universities don't even have GPA. They have a percentage system. So what is a low GPA or a percentage on all these scales? Glad you asked. On a 4.0 GPA scale, a 3.5 to 4 GPA is considered very good. Whereas on a 5.0 GPA scale, a 4.5 to 5 GPA is considered very good. In percentage, this corresponds to 90% to 100%. But what about 4.3 GPA scale, Sadia? Well, a 4.3 GPA scale is same as a 4.0 GPA scale, except for the numbers above 4.0. Any GPA above 4.0 to 4.3 is considered a very, very good on a 4.3 GPA scale because it takes into account the difficulty of the courses you took. So if you have any GPA between 4 to 4.3, that means you took very difficult courses and you scored very high in them. Besides that, a 4.3 and a 4.0 GPA scale is the same. So on a 4.0 GPA scale, 2.7 to 3 corresponds to a low GPA. On a 5.0 scale, this would be 2.5 to 3.5. And in percentage, this would be 60 to 75%. So the question is, can you get into Canadian universities with a low GPA? Well, yes, of course you can. There are five things you can do to get into Canadian university even with a low GPA. First thing, you can get a good GRE or a GMAT score. The second thing, you can write a brilliant statement of purpose. More on that later, I have a surprise for you. Third thing, you can get killer recommendation letters from your referees. The fourth thing would be your experience. Even if you don't have a good GPA, you can have good experience in that particular field and that would still give you an edge. And fifth and final thing, you can have extracurriculars on your profile that give you an edge if you are applying with a low GPA. So what's this surprise, Sadia, about the SOPs? Well, I will be reviewing your SOPs on this channel. So from the date of publication of this video, within the next three weeks, no later than that, send me your SOPs and I will review them in a future video on this channel. So if you want to send me your SOP, subscribe to the channel, turn the notification bells on so you get the notification when I make the video about it. Send me your SOPs at support at sadiakhaf.com and I will review them on this channel in a future video. Don't forget to let me know the field for which you're applying as well. So, what universities accept low GPA? But before that, what fields accept low GPAs? Because not every field is the one where you can get in with a low GPA. In general, my advice, if you have a low GPA, stay away from sciences and engineering and focus more on the fields that focus on your skills rather than your GPA. So any degree in arts, any degree in management, business, some finance degrees, they will gladly accept low GPAs because they are more focused on your skills. So apply for degrees that don't really care that much about GPA, but care more about your personal skills. Those would be the degrees to aim for if you have a low GPA. But there are exceptions. There are universities on this list that still let you do sciences, engineering, even health sciences with a low GPA. So it's not hopeless. You, you can still get, you can still study engineering, sciences, health sciences with a low GPA. First up on my list is University of Regina, which is perfect for that. It is one of the top 50 universities in the world, under 50, and it lets you study engineering, sciences, arts, medicine, nursing with a low GPA. So perfect for you if you don't have a high GPA, but you still want to study sciences and engineering, this is a very good candidate. Second on my list is King's University College. 
it lets you study a lot of fields it lets you study arts business history humanity so if you're interested in any of those fields King's University College is a very good choice. It offers programs both for undergrad, masters, as well as some as some PhDs. So a great choice if you want to study any of these fields. Next up on my list is Vancouver Community College. And this is a special one because it's more focused on skill building. So if you are interested in continuing your education, building up on it, having some apprenticeship, skill related degrees, this is a great choice for you. Also, this is one of the only ones on this list that offers courses in culinary arts and baking. Although I do have some moral objections or studying culinary arts or baking in the first place, but if you are interested in studying that, you can apply to Vancouver Community College. Next up on my list is Capilano University. And this one offers programs in arts, humanities, health sciences programs, and some diplomas. The special thing about this one is that they accept GPAs as low as 2.2 or on a percentage scale, it can be as low as 60% high school grades. So no matter what your grades are, you can still apply to this particular university. And another special thing about this is you don't need any IELTS score for this particular one. You can apply without IELTS scores and you can still get in. Next up on my list is Concordia University of Edmonton. Similar to the previous one, slightly higher criteria, you can study at faculties of arts, sciences, management, and the criteria for admission is 2.0 GPA and 65% on percentage scale. It offers courses both in undergrad, masters, and some PhDs, so you have a lot of options if you want to study. So what documents do you need to apply to any of these universities for an undergrad, master's or PhD program? First up, you need some identity documents to prove who you are. Everybody has it. This will probably be just your national ID card, your passport maybe. Second, you need your language requirements, except for Capilano University maybe. Most of these universities will require a proof of English language proficiency in the form of IELTS or if the medium of education at your university was English, then maybe just a transcript or a letter from your university saying that the medium of education at your university or your college was English. Third, you will need some essays. You will need to write statement of purpose. You will need to write some cover letters. So these will be the documents that you will write by yourself. Fourth will be your degrees and transcripts. So this is basically your academic history, your transcripts, your grades that you have, your, your academic history that you have basically. And the fifth type of document is the reference letters from others. These are the letters that you will ask your teachers to write about you showing how proficient you are in your education as a person whatever they remember about you in a letter of reference as a reminder don't forget to send me your sops at support at sadiakhaf.com so i can review them in a future video on this channel and if you are applying to any undergrad ms or phd position right now and don't have high grades i have a video on my channel explaining in depth how to make low GPA matter much less in your application and make your application still stand out. So you can watch that if you are applying for any position with a low GPA right now. See you next time.